Okay. So let's just think, motivate. Donc, pensons et We're sitting here to listen, think, analyze, internalize. Yeah. Um, these ideas to see if there's anything that's useful that we can use as tools. To help us develop our amazing potential so we can be of benefit to others. All right. So do you have any questions from your discussions? Besides choice. <laughs> any other insights, questions, thoughts? Yeah? Nothing? No? Yes. Yes. So it is a question from the group. Uh, we had a lot of debate around it earlier. Uh, it's about be your own therapist. Can you please elaborate a bit more around that? Um, of course, we are not talking here about cases where medication would be needed. Or Start that last sentence again, you what? Sorry? Start that last sentence again. I didn't I missed the first part. Oh, uh, the last part is uh, we have um, somehow eliminated the cases where medication is needed, where uh, it would be foolish not to seek for um, medicine or a therapy a therapist in ox, ox, uh, Western uh, meaning. So I, I hear that bit, but I can't. Rem I don't know what the, the, the verb at the beginning of that sentence was. I don't quite get the point. So ask that last part again. The question was: Can you please elaborate more around be your own therapist, and to which extent can we? do that and not seek for external help to see within our mind because okay, we can be spinning saying. around and round and round. Huh? We can be spinning around in circles in our mind. That's clearly not being that's clearly not what's being suggested, is it? Donc, donc, la question est, est à, à propos de, ils en ont beaucoup parlé dans leur groupe, ils ont débattu à ce propos, hein, mm. et de ce qui a été évoqué quant au fait de être ou devenir son propre thérapeute. Hein. Et donc là, évidemment, et la question n'était pas de savoir hein, s'il y avait besoin d'une aide mm. médicale, et on exclut ce cas-là, mais s'il n'y a pas besoin d'aide médicale, dans quelle mesure est-ce que vous pouvez élaborer Yes, for sure. We haven't really even begun to discuss the mind and how to do this job, so we will get into it soon. In fact, maybe after this discussion, we can start go from karma, we can do that, and then we start doing that. Exactly. They need a seat. Vous avez besoin d'une chaise Bonjour. <laughs> okay, we'll do we'll do this exactly. We'll do it. Donc uh, oui, on, on va en parler, on va le faire. Mm -hmm. on va le so faire. What else, people? Quoi Anything else? Well, that'll do. Let's, let's discuss the mind now. Donc uh, parlons de l'esprit maintenant. I mean, we're discussing the mind already. Bon, on parle déjà, on a déjà parlé. But from the perspective of this understanding of cause and effect and karma. Mais on a parlé de l'esprit jusqu'à maintenant sous mm. cet angle de la compréhension de la le, cause et de l'effet yeah. du karma. Et now let's now let's look at um, now let's look at uh, at the way the mind works. Maintenant et regardons intéressons-nous à la façon dont l'esprit fonctionne. So the framework for understanding this is to see the the different stages of practice is really important. Donc le cadre pour pouvoir comprendre cela et c'est de comprendre ouais. quelles sont les différentes étapes et de la de la pratique de, du chemin. You know, this 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 Tibetan term, this all these teachings are, are presented in the package called the Lam Rim. Donc il y a ce terme tibétain et vous savez tous les enseignements sont présentés et euh, sous euh, et euh, dans, à l'intérieur de cet ensemble de ce package qu'on appelle en tibétain Lam Rim. And it literally means gradual uh, path. Littéralement, la mm. prime, ça veut dire chemin gradué. Well, as Holina said one time, it's like, it's like our education system. 
Which implies, doesn't it, that these teachings, in terms of their being practices to internalize, you, they're presented in any body of knowledge, as, as in any body of knowledge that we learn, they're, in, they're, they're presented in terms of order, what order you do them. This is pretty reasonable, isn't it? Et ce qui implique, quand il dit que c'est comparable à notre système éducatif, ben que tous ces enseignements qui sont présentés ainsi comme un package, et ben, et sont destinés à être internalisés. Et ce que ça sous-entend, et bien c'est que comme pour n'importe quel autre corpus de connaissances, et il y a un certain ordre à respecter à suivre. So if you study music or maths or any body of knowledge, we, we start at the early stuff, we go to the more advanced, then we go to the most advanced. It's really, it's something we're completely familiar with. Donc, quand vous étudiez la musique ou les mathématiques, eh bien, on sait bien qu'il y a un certain ordre à respecter. Pour n'importe quel corps. But perhaps we're not familiar with um, thinking in terms of a body of body, a philosophical knowledge or spiritual knowledge in those terms. Mais... <laughs> Nous, nous ne sommes pas habitués à considérer ainsi et la connaissance philosophique ou la connaissance religieuse. Well, for sure, that's the labyrinth. That's what it is. It's the presentation of all the different. It's the presentation of all the different um, points taken from the vast body of knowledge of Buddhist philosophy, psychology, metaphysics, and the rest, and then presented in an orderly way, orderly according to the capacity of the disciple, naturally. Mais donc, c'est de ça qu'il s'agit avec le Lamrim, et en fait, c'est une présentation et ordonnée dans un certain ordre, et de toutes les connaissances issues du bouddhisme, qu'il s'agisse de la psychologie bouddhiste, de la philosophie bouddhiste, de la métaphysique bouddhiste, en fait, de tous les enseignements du bouddhisme, et présentés et dans un ordre bien précis. Already, we've implied this in, in, using the analogy of a bird needs two wings, wisdom wing, compassion wing. Donc, déjà, cette idée était sous-entendue, et quand on a dit plus tôt qu'un oiseau a besoin de deux ailes, donc on a parlé de la sagesse et de la compassion. Well, the wisdom wing comes first. L'aile de la sagesse, et eh bien, c'est elle qui vient d'avoir. In a sense, the point of all the path is the compassion wing, which is where we benefit others. This is the point. Et dans le sens que, en fait, toute l'idée du chemin et ce à quoi on veut aboutir, et eh ben, c'est la compassion, c'est l'aide de la compassion. Mm. But as Holy, you know, as Holiness says, compassion is not enough. You need wisdom. Mais comme le dit sa santé, la compassion, ça ne suffit pas. Vous avez mm. besoin de sagesse. So the wisdom wing is where we do all the work. As I said, we, we, it's the nuts and bolts of Buddha's teachings, karma and the mind, really, how it all functions. That we apply, where we apply that for one's own benefit. Et l'aide de la sagesse, comme je l'ai dit, ben, ce sont les tenants et aboutissants de toute et la, la voie bouddhiste. Donc là, plus précisément, le karma et l'esprit, et donc qu'on va mettre en pratique. And then on the basis of success at this, you benefit, you're able to benefit others. On the basis, hein? on the basis of success. Okay. Et donc sur la base ben, d'avoir et mm. obtenu le succès, d'avoir... Well, yeah. so this Lam Rim is presented um, uh, Tsongkhapa, the 14th century lineage Lama, whose, um, whose presentations of this Lam Rim are the basis of the, of the discussion we're having here. Donc là et la base de la discussion qu'on a ici, et eh ben ce, on se base sur ce Lam Rim et enseigné par Lama Tsongkhapa qui est le et en fait le maître de notre lignée, un lama du XIVe siècle. Using kind of the terminology that Lama Zobrimshay would use very politely, respecting the way they describe it, he would say. Et donc, si on veut utiliser la terminologie très que Lama Zobrimshay avec beaucoup de respect et emploierait à la suite de Lama Tsongkhapa, il dirait. It's the, first of all, there's the teachings and practices suitable to the disciple of the least capability. Que tout d'abord, il y a les enseignements et les pratiques qui sont appropriés pour le disciple et de capacité et inférieure. And then there are the teachings and practices suitable to the disciple of the middle capability. Ensuite, les enseignements et les pratiques qui sont et appropriés pour le disciple de capacité intermédiaire. And then there are the teachings and practices suitable to the disciple of the greatest capability. Et ensuite, il y a les enseignements et les pratiques qui sont appropriés pour le disciple de capacité supérieure. And we can hear the meaning. Bon, on comprend la signification, le sens, mais... But it's not how we talk, is it? C'est pas de cette façon-là qu'on parle so, de manière ordinaire. Certainly in English. En tout cas, you know, certainement en anglais. We, we, if I go to school, we, we, we enter into junior school. 
Donc, si on va à l'école, on va d'abord, on va commencer par l'école primaire. Then we go to high school. Ensuite, on va à l'école secondaire. Then we go to university. Ensuite, on va à l'université. Then even after that, you go to you do postgraduate. Et puis, même à, à la fin, après l'université, ben, on va terminer par un doctorat. That we we're familiar with these ideas. <laughs> so the wisdom wing is junior school and high school, and then you, then the compassion wing is is university. And then at the end, of the final stages of that is Vajrayana or Tantra. Uh, is uh, postgraduate. No, really, it's really, I mean, because these are terms we're familiar with, we kind of get it. But the teachings and practices suitable to the student of the least capability, we don't talk like that. But we can understand it now. Parce que ce, ce, as un vocabulaire qui nous est familier, bon, on peut comprendre plus facilement. Mais si on nous dit enseignement et pratique appropriée mm. pour le disciple de capacité inférieure, ça ne nous parle pas beaucoup. So the essence of junior school. Non, l'essence de l'école primaire. Is, is abiding by the laws of karma. C'est se conformer aux lois du karma. And that's primarily relating to controlling, relating to your body, to behavior only, behavior, not the mind, behavior. Body and speech. Et ça, c'est euh, principalement et euh, relié euh, au comportement, en fait. Donc, pas encore l'esprit, hein, mais le corps et la parole. And this should come first. Et c'est ça qui devrait passer en premier. The Buddha's view clearly is everything comes from the mind, and we're going to go into this. Parce que la vue du Bouddha, et il est clair que tout vient de l'esprit, et on va en y dire. Interestingly, Tibetans don't point here, they point here. Yeah. Bon, simplement, les Tibétains, quand ils parlent de l'esprit, ils ne pointent pas vers la tête, mm. ils pointent vers le cœur. Everything is driven by the mind. Donc, tout est régi, mu par l'esprit. But the way I like to put it is that we can't control the servants of the mind, which is our body and our speech, our behavior, then we're in trouble. Mais comme j'aime à le dire, et si nous ne sommes pas capables de contrôler les serviteurs de notre esprit, qui sont le corps et la parole, bah alors et on va faire face à des difficultés. Mm. So we began talking about karma a bit. Donc on a commencé à parler un peu du karma. So now let's go to the mind. Maintenant, passons à l'esprit. This is where we become our own therapist. Là son and you could argue this is where we really become uniquely a Buddhist. The idea of abiding by the laws of karma is really just living a life of good ethics. Don't kill, don't lie, don't steal, don't harm. That's familiar to the whole world. A good communist, a good Muslim, a good Buddhist would do that. Et donc, l'idée de se conformer aux lois du karma, ben, vraiment, en, en fait, c'est simplement de suivre, d'avoir une bonne éthique. Et qu'un bon communiste ou un bon musulman ou un bon bouddhiste, ben, tous vont partager cette même éthique. OK, the reasons why you would do it, that's another discussion. Bon. And, and the mechanics of it, they're, they're very different. Whether you, you know, have a view of a creator, you're a materialist, or you have a view of a Buddhist, they're different ways of presenting. But the principle is the, the same. Everybody shares good ethics, good, you know, a decent human being, good ethics. That's junior school. Donc, d'accord, et euh, la raison pour laquelle on le fait, et le le mécanisme qui euh, explique et euh, le fait de se conformer à, à cette bonne éthique et va être très différente suivant qu'on est euh, matérialiste et euh, qu'on croit en un dieu créateur ou qu'on est bouddhiste. Mais tous vont partager et euh, cette, euh, cette croyance, ce qui fait un, un bon être humain, un être humain décent, le fait de se conformer à cette bonne éthique. Ça va être high school now. Donc, Revenons-en maintenant à et l'école secondaire. Understand the way the mind. Pour comprendre et la façon dont l'esprit. Mm -hmm. So when you study um, the mind in more depth, you study the epistemological model and the psychological model. Donc quand on étudie l'esprit euh, plus en profondeur, on va étudier le modèle épistémologique de l'esprit et le modèle and, psychologique de l'esprit. And so the epistemological model is unbelievably fascinating. Le modèle épistémologique est incroyablement fascinant. The way the mind functions. La façon dont l'esprit fonctionne. And remember clearly we're not discussing the thing called a brain here. Et souvenez-vous hein, que il est clair que là ce n'est pas de cette chose qu'on appelle le cerveau qu'on parle. We're discussing the, the way our, the actual cognitive process itself nous, functions. Nous, nous parlons de la façon dont le processus cognitif lui-même fonctionne. Yeah. 
And the knowledge about the mind, this knowledge about the mind is coming from the great yogis from the past, including the Indians before the Buddha, who on the basis of having single point of concentration had this brilliant ability to observe the internal workings of the mind, which is not known, this is not the way we think in the West at all, in the modern psychology at all. Et la, la connaissance euh, ben, de ce fonctionnement d'esprit, en fait, nous vient de ces et, euh, Indiens euh, extraordinaires qui, euh, et avant même le Bouddha, et le Bouddha a, été à leur, a, a fait à leur suite, euh, eh bien, ont réussi euh, et à, à internaliser euh, cette, cette connaissance des fonctionnements d'esprit. Sur, sur la base de la concentration centrale d'un point. Et ce n'est pas du tout ainsi euh, qu'on en parle dans la psychologie moderne. Mm. So they use, so as, you know, we would use the micro, a microscope to observe the brain. Parce que nous, ce que feraient nos scientifiques serait d'utiliser un microscope pour observer le cerveau. They, and we need to, as a, if we're being Buddhists, eventually to develop this marvelous microscope of our own mind, access this more subtle level of cognition. Mais si on est Buddhiste, ce qu'il va nous falloir faire, c'est au final arriver à accéder à ce microscope de notre propre esprit pour pouvoir connaître ces niveaux plus subtils de conscience. To really do the, the, the radical work that Buddha says we are capable of doing. Pour vraiment pouvoir faire ce travail radical dont Bouddha nous dit que nous sommes capables de faire. Of unpacking and unraveling and deconstructing and then reconstructing the, all, the, the, all the thoughts and feelings and emotions de déballer et déconstruire et puis ensuite de reconstruire eh bien, tout ce package de pensées et d'émotions qui sont là. Or another way of putting it. Ou une autre façon de le dire. To rid the mind utterly of all the misconceptions, all the nonsense, all the delusions, all the voices of ego. De débarrasser complètement de l'esprit, eh bien, tous les non-sens, toutes les délusions, toutes ces voix de l'ego. And then to develop to perfection all the virtuous, valid, reasonable, useful states of mind. Et ensuite, eh bien, de développer à la perfection tous les états d'esprit euh, valides, sensés, euh, raisonnables, utiles, bénéfiques. So we're going to go, we'll go into the psychological model. Donc, on en viendra au modèle psychologique. To, be a, to learn to be our own therapist. Euh, apprendre à être notre propre thérapeute. But first, it's really fascinating to just even touch upon the way the mind functions. Mais d'abord, c'est vraiment fascinant de ne serait-ce que toucher la façon dont l'esprit fonctionne. So from that perspective, The Buddhist view would say we have, there's one way of putting it, that the mind functions in two ways. Donc, sous cet angle, et la vue bouddhiste dirait que l'esprit fonctionne de deux façons. There's um, sensory consciousness. Il y a les consciences sensorielles. And then mental consciousness. Il y a la conscience mentale. So that's, and this is already totally interesting. Et ça déjà, c'est totalement mm. intéressant. As Lama Yeshi puts it, we give incredible power to our sense. We, we make the body the boss. We give way more power to our sensory consciousness than they deserve. Et comme le dit la Mayéché, nous donnons beaucoup plus de pouvoir à nos consciences sensorielles qu'elles ne le méritent. Et comme il le dit, nous faisons de notre corps le boss, le chef. Hmm. So a really a simple example I always use, and I'll use the same one again, there's no harm. You know. If I look over here, my, you see my eyes look here. And I, you know, I'd say, oh, that's a very pretty cup. None of us would even question the assumption that my eyes see a pretty cup. Donc aucun d'entre nous ne va et remettre en question et cette affirmation que les yeux et voix connaissent une jolie tasse. Well, sensory consciousness doesn't have that capacity for the Buddha. Eh bien, selon le Bouddha, la conscience sensorielle mm. n'a pas cette capacité. So, what is sensory consciousness then? Donc, c'est quoi alors la conscience sensorielle? There's five, we know there's five. Bon, nous savons qu'il y a So we have eye consciousness, consciousness, ear consciousness, tactile consciousness, for example. Donc, il y a par exemple la conscience visuelle, la conscience auditive, la conscience tactile. So when you, so the, the the way they talk about the mind is that whatever state of mind we have, they refer to it as like subject. The mind is a subject. Donc la façon dont In general. on parle de l'esprit, euh, eh bien, ils disent que quel que soit et euh, l'état d'esprit euh, que nous avons euh, et euh, l'esprit, le, le, on va s'y référer comme étant le sujet. And whatever it cognizes is its object. Et donc, quoi que ce soit que la conscience connaît, eh ben, on va en parler comme de l'objet. So what we assume is donc, notre, et a priori, va être être le that a pretty cup. 
is the object of my eye consciousness. No, no, the sensory, so your sensory, the eye consciousness, or how they talk about it, ear consciousness, are actually profoundly limited in their capacity for cognition. Sont en fait profondément limités dans leur capacité de cognition. De leur eye consciousness, de eye consciousness. La conscience visuelle. And remember the word mind and consciousness are broadly speaking, are here synonymous, and the, the word consciousness is usually used here when it comes to the senses. Et souvenez-vous que les mots esprit et conscience sont synonymes dans ce contexte, mais que en général, quand on va parler des sens, on parlera de conscience. Is that part of my mind? Donc, c'est cette partie de mon esprit. Remember, which is not physical. Mind is not physical. Souvenez-vous, hein, et esprit, conscience, qui n'est pas physique. Eye consciousness is not the eyeball. Et donc, la conscience visuelle, c'est pas le globe oculaire. It's that, it's part of one's, that part of one's mind. C'est cette partie de mon esprit. That functions clearly in de- independence upon a decent eyeball and all the bits and pieces working well. Qui fonctionne, c'est clair, en dépendance d'un globe oculaire décent et de, de tous ces morceaux et parties qui, 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 faut qui fonctionnent bien. To cognize something. Donc, pour qu'on puisse connaître quelque chose. So the, the eye consciousness Donc, la conscience visuelle can only cognize two things, has only two objects of cognition. Ne peut connaître que deux choses et, euh, différentes. Elle ne peut avoir, il n'y a que deux objets, en fait, à sa cognition. Shape and color. La forme et la couleur. That's it. C'est tout. Ear consciousness. You know, so as soon as I, you know, I always use the example. As soon as I hear that one trumpet note, I'll bliss out and say, "Wow, Miles Davis." Et j'utilise toujours cet exemple. Et dès que j'entends et cette simple note de trompette, et je vais être rempli de félicité, je vais me dire, "Ah, Miles uh, Davis." Our ear consciousness is capable of cognizing sound, mere sound. Mais la conscience auditive est, n'est capable que de connaître un simple son. So it's clear we give more power to our senses than they, than, than they, than they have. Donc il est clair que nous donnons plus de pouvoir à nos sens qu'ils n'en ont effectivement. Mm. So if eye consciousness can only cognize shape and color here. Donc si la conscience visuelle n'est capable de connaître que forme et couleur ici. Which ça, part of my mind? Quelle partie de mon esprit? Is cognizing a pretty cup. Une jolie tasse. Which part of, for which part of my mind is a pretty cup the object? Pour quelle partie de mon esprit est-ce que une jolie tasse est l'objet? That's the mental consciousness. De quelle partie de mon esprit? Sensory and mental. That's it. C'est la conscience mentale, puisque il n'y a que mm. conscience. Mentale. So mental consciousness, as Lamaze puts it, that's where the workshop is. Et donc, cette conscience mentale, ben, comme le dit Lamaze Par, c'est là qu'est la. And this is we'll now discuss this. Et its contents et et ça qu'on va parler, de ces all the thoughts and feelings and emotions and I, so, yeah that are contained in our sen- in our mental consciousness donc, qui sont dans notre so what's happening is this donc, ce qui se passe, c'est la chose and it's all described in great depth and length in the texts et tout ça est et en et dans des, les plus dans les you know my eye consciousness goes here Ma conscience visuelle se dirige là. And in a millisecond, Et en une milliseconde, out of my mouth will come the words, de ma bouche vont sortir les mots, what a pretty cup. Quelle jolie tasse. Well, what's that? Mais c'est quoi ça? Well, that's an opinion. Bah, c'est une opinion. It's a concept. C'est un concept. It's a thought. C'est une pensée. It's a viewpoint. C'est un point de vue. It's an idea. C'est une idée. So the mental consciousness Donc, la conscience mentale, the way it functions la façon dont elle fonctionne, is at two levels. Et y a deux we only really are familiar with the first. Et, uh, nous sommes vraiment familiers the grosser level of cognition. Le niveau, le niveau le plus de cognition. And that's cog- uh, conceptual. Et ça, c'est we live at the, as soon as we open our eyes in the morning, as soon as we come out of sleep back into consciousness, Dès que nous ouvrons les yeux le matin, quand nous et sortons du sommeil, et de nouveau, nous sommes... The grosser level of our mental consciousness starts activating, start, is activated. Le niveau le plus grossier de notre conscience est, est activé, alors commence à s'activer. Which is thoughts, Donc, c'est concepts, c'est, les, les opinions, pensées, ideas, pensées, viewpoints. Les opinions, les idées, les points de vue. So we in our world might divide what goes on in our mind in terms of, in daily life, in, in terms of thoughts and feelings. 
Donc, nous, dans notre monde, et on aime bien diviser ce qui se passe dans notre esprit, on va parler de pensée d'un côté et puis de sentiment de l'autre. Well, the Buddha's view would say, et, et, mais le, la vue du Bouddha, elle serait la suivante. You know, at this level of, con- the, the level of our mental consciousness functioning in day-to-day life, et c'est qu'à ce niveau et de notre conscience mentale, de la façon dont... Is all conceptual. Et au quotidien, eh ben, lui dirait que... So whether it's thoughts, you know, you learn mathematical thoughts or musical theory thoughts, these highly sophisticated concepts that we learn and become familiar with, that, that's thoughts. Donc tout est pensé pour lui, euh, qu'il s'agisse et, euh, de pensées euh, liées à la musique ou aux mathématiques, si on apprend des théories compliquées... And what peut... we would refer to as feelings and emotions, like anger and rage and despair and jealousy and love and joy... Tout ça pour le Bouddha sont des pensées. Et ce à quoi nous 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 référons comme étant des sentiments ou des émotions comme la colère, la bonté, la joie, etc. They clearly have this really powerful emotional component as we describe it. Donc clairement, il y a une composante émotionnelle importante. Which is actually when the, the body is involved, isn't it? Dans ces parties-là et en fait, c'est à, dans ce cas-là et le corps est lui-même impliqué, n'est-ce pas? But the body, the body component. Mais la composante corporelle, it's just the tip of the iceberg. c'est simplement et le bout de l'iceberg. Anger and love and joy and, 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 and depression are thoughts, conceptual stories. Parce que et la, la colère et la jalousie et la dépression et sont des pensées. And love, for example, love, compassion L'amour, also. La compassion également sont des pensées, des histoires. The, the, so we give enormous... We give attention. We well, we we pay attention to the to the emotional component, but we don't notice what goes on until it becomes emotional. Put it that way. Le, donc, on pourrait dire que nous prêtons et attention à la composante émotionnelle, et mais en fait, nous. Euh, sorry. We don't notice what's going on in our mind conceptually until it becomes physical, until the physical is included, until the body is shaking, or your tears are coming, or whatever. Mais c'est que, en fait, et nous euh, arrivons à noter, à être conscients de ce qui se passe dans notre esprit que quand ça devient physique, quand on a le corps qui tremble, qu'on a les larmes qui coulent, à ce moment-là, on va devenir conscient de ce qui se passe you know. dans notre esprit. So if you see a person shouting, Donc, si vous voyez quelqu'un qui est en train de you know, their eyes wide, avec les yeux grands ouverts, irrational words coming out of their mouth, des mots irrationnels qui sortent de leur bouche, kicking or sh- you know, shouting, Frappe, we'll say, oh, wow, he's angry. Yeah, the body's doing something. Oui, le corps est en train de faire That's chose. just the expression Mais c'est simplement of what's going on at a deeper level, de ce qui se passe à un niveau plus profond, which is conceptual. Qui est conceptual. Anger is a concept. La con- la colère est un concept. It's not meant to be sarcastic or a joke, you know. Et we'll unpack it, we'll see. Et, et c'est pas pour être sarcastique ou pour faire une blague qu'on dit ça. Hein. Et si on déballe l'histoire, ben on va bien yeah. s'en rendre compte. Love and compassion the same. Et même chose pour l'amour et la compassion. But the, the Buddhist approach is these conceptual states of mind go- have very subtle levels of conceptuality. Mais l'approche bouddhiste, c'est que ces niveaux et très subtils d'esprit, euh, eh bien, ont des histoires conceptuelles plus subtiles. Mm-hmm. So whether I'm shouting and, at my boyfriend Howard and shaking my fist and shouting and tears coming out of my mouth, you know, or whether I'm saying what a pretty cup, what goes on in my, conce- what goes on in my mind is a series of thoughts and opinions, and depending on how strong they are is how, far the, how, how strong the body's involved, isn't it? Et donc, que je sois et en train de crier et de taper du poing vers mon petit ami Howard, euh, ou que je sois en train de dire « Oh, quelle jolie tasse !» Eh ben tout ce qui se passe dans mon esprit, c'est une série de pensées et d'émotions. Mais ce qui se passe, c'est que je ne vais en prendre conscience que quand mon corps est impliqué. Mm. So, as you mentioned briefly, Sorry. as we mentioned briefly, donc, comme on l'a mentionné brièvement, all the contents of our mental consciousness, tous les contents, de notre conscience mentale, at this level we function in day to day this grosser level of conceptuality are divided into three categories donc, être en trois categories. as we've discussed Et donc, on l'a discuté, simply on speaking donc, pour those conceptual stories ces that are negative qui sont négatives, neurotic névrotiques, disturbing perturbées, delusional afflictions, afflicted, many synonyms. These are the cause of our suffering. Long-term and short-term. 
and actions of body and speech that we do on the basis of these is then the process of creating karma. Then you have those that are called positive or beneficial or useful or productive or reasonable. Et ensuite, il y a ces autres états d'esprit euh, qu'on va appeler euh, productifs ou sensés, euh, raisonnables, utiles. These also are conceptual stories. Donc, il s'agit là aussi d'histoires conceptuelles. Love, compassion. L'amour, la compassion. We can see sometimes the body is very involved in those too. Et on peut voir et parfois que le, le corps est également très impliqué dans cela. These are valid concepts. So, so broadly, and this is a hugely, this is a crucial component of Buddhist psychology that unless we understand this, we don't understand how to be a Buddhist at all. And the third category, I like to call them the mechanics of the mind, as I mentioned. These kind of many the function of many of these is it, they enable us to do anything properly. So if you're a mer you want you want a, you, you know you, if you're a sniper. You need very good focus. You need very good attention. Attention. You need concentration. You need good memory. They're crucial states of mind to, 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 do it, to be a good sniper. But they're not in their nature. Concentration, attention and good memory are not in their nature good or bad. Not in their nature virtuous or non-virtuous. Et la concentration, l'attention, la bonne mémoire ne sont pas en nature bonnes ou mauvaises. And the same as a, med as a meditator. Et même chose pour mm. et la concentration. Or to help to help somebody. D'un méditant. To help that mouse. Ou si elles sont utilisées pour aider quelqu'un pour une souris. You need all these different states of mind. So as, as trying to be a Buddhist and be our own therapist, we need to do this job of distinguishing using the mechanics of our mind to distinguish between the delusions and the virtues. That's the bottom line. So we've got to start. So we've got to, to start. We have to start somewhere. But the skill we eventually must cultivate to do this job seriously yeah, we need a single point of concentration. This brilliant technique these amazing Hindus invented several thousand years ago. Yeah. We really can't get ahead of the game until we have that. But we can start somewhere. We can do an enormous amount at the grosser level. There's no question. So I mentioned before that mental consciousness, we have two, it, it functions both conceptually and the other, the other level of, of mental consciousness is a subtle level of cognition of the way it works, and we virtually never touch that in real, any real sense, and that's known as, simply known as perception, which is obviously a, un, is a very specific use of the word in Buddhist psychology, not the way we use it in general. We need through con when we get concentration, single point of concentration. Donc, quand on aura la concentration point, we can learn to access this subtler level of our mental consciousness, which is not conceptual. Qui pas conceptual. It's beyond conceptual. Qui est -delà du conceptual. So clearly, that's pretty abstract for us if we use ordinary, if we use modern, you know, um, psychological terms and. In, on the basis of neuroscience, there's no equivalent here because as long as the brain is involved, it's a gross level. Donc, et, it's conceptuality. Yeah. 
où là, simplement, et quand on va parler du cerveau, eh ben, il n'y aura que le niveau grossier de conscience. So we hear in Buddhism, you need to have a realization of something in meditation. Donc, quand on entend dire que dans le bouddhisme, on dit des choses comme avoir en méditation une réalisation de quelque chose. We're using a simple analogy. Ben, pour utiliser une analogie simple. Knowing the recipe of a cake is conceptuality. Connaître la recette d'un gâteau, ce serait l'équivalent de la conceptualité. And then tasting the cake, that, that cake, that's beyond conceptual. Just, mais, there's an analogy only. Mais goûter le gâteau, that's experiential. Là, c'est au-delà du conceptuel, c'est expérientiel. So we need to learn about, for example, impermanence conceptually. We start there. Donc ce serait l'équivalent de l'au-delà du conceptuel. Donc il nous faut et commencer d'abord, il nous faut bien... And through, mu and through much practice in our daily life. Et euh, on commence par là, et ensuite, eh bien, avec beaucoup de l'expérience... Et then eventually in meditation, when we have got single point of concentration... Et au final, en méditation, quand nous aurons obtenu la concentration centrale d'un point, at a certain level, donc là, we will get a direct experience of impermanence. Will it be an awareness, a genuine realization of impermanence, not just the intellectual idea about it? À un niveau plus subtil, on pourra alors avoir une expérience directe, par exemple, de l'impermanence, une perception directe de l'impermanence, et qui ne sera pas plus seulement et une compréhension conceptuelle. We can learn all about dependent arising and emptiness. Theoretically, we must. Parce que on peut aussi, eh bien, apprendre et à propos et euh, de euh, la production de dépendance et de la vacuité. But eventually, et in, in, eventually in subtle meditation. L'étudier, mais au final et en méditation à ce niveau. Utilizing our mental consciousness at this subtle non-conceptual level. En utilisant notre conscience mentale à ce niveau plus subtil et à ce niveau qui est non conceptuel. We'll have a direct realization or experience of emptiness. À ce niveau-là, on aura une réalisation directe, une expérience de la vérité. Mm. So let's state at the conceptual level and talk about these states of mind then, and how we learn to distinguish. Mais si on en reste à ce niveau conceptuel et, euh, et à la façon dont nous allons apprendre à distinguer entre les différents mm. états d'esprit. So the, again, the, the, remember the, the, the framework for this. Donc là encore, souvenez-vous du cadre. Hein, or the, 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 is the goal. Remember the goal. The goal. Souvenez-vous de l'objectif. Buddha. De l'objectif. Buddha. Ridding the mind utterly of all the neuroses, the first set of states of mind. Débarrasser complètement l'esprit de toutes les névroses, ce premier type d'état d'esprit. And then the, the second, the second, you know, Buddha, the second one, the second part. Et puis la seconde syllabe, seconde partie du mot Bouddha. Developing to perfection, the second lot of the states of mind, the virtues. Développer la perfection, eh bien, la seconde catégorie d'état d'esprit, les vertus. So again, this is a weird idea for us in our culture. We give equal status, don't we, to anger, love, compassion, generosity, and hope you have a fairly reasonable balance of them. But there's no view in neuroscience, and there's no view in our psychology that would suggest that you can rid the mind utterly of attachment, anger, jealousy, depression. Mais là, c'est une idée bizarre pour nous et dans notre culture. Et euh, parce que et on donne un statut égal et à tous ces, à ces états d'esprit de ces deux catégories. Donc pour nous, avoir de la colère, de la jalousie, de l'amour, de la compassion, tant que c'est un peu équilibré, ben, c'est normal. Et Ça... donc c'est une idée très bizarre pour nous, pour la psychologie moderne, pour les neurosciences, de penser qu'on puisse débarrasser complètement bon. l'esprit mmh. de toutes les névroses. So even just hearing this. Simplement d'entendre cela. Why would we want to get rid of anger, depression, jealousy, low self-esteem? Because they're the source of my pain. The source of my suffering. And the source of why I do things to make harm others, isn't it? To harm others. But why logically... Can we rid the mind of these conceptual states of mind? Because they're not valid concepts. And what that means is, in Buddhist terms, well, in our terms, it's reasonable. That the, if, you're the, if the thought that you have doesn't have a valid referent object, si ces pas un objet valide, then clearly it's a nonsense thought, isn't it? Et alors il est clair que une pensée That's what Buddha is saying. Et ça que nous dit Buddha. That anger, for example, que la attachment, que 
their conceptual stories and their key function, they embellish the object. So, 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 for example, you know, if I'm in, I'm in love with my boyfriend Howard, I have attachment for him. I also have, in the second category of states of mind, I have, an, I have a valid concept there, I have love for him. Mais également, et ça, ça vient de la seconde catégorie d'un esprit, ceux qui sont valides, et euh, j'ai de l'amour pour lui. Ça, ça These are ça, utterly and completely different states of mind. Mais là, on a deux états d'esprit complètement euh, différents et distincts. But, uh, but in our usual daily lives without analysis, we conflate them. We think, we think they're literally the same. Mais dans notre analyse euh, au quotidien, eh bien, on les confond complètement. On pense qu'il s'agit de la même chose. So the Buddha is saying attachment is a delusion. It caused the extent to which it's in the mind. It causes me to be not in touch with reality. That particular object, whether it's Howard or the chocolate cake. Et donc, ce que ça va causer, ce en quoi ça va résulter, c'est que, et je, dans la même mesure, je ne vais pas être synchro avec la réalité, qu'il s'agisse de Howard ou du gâteau au chocolat. That chocolate cake on the plate. Ce gâteau au chocolat sur la scène. So that's a valid concept. It's not a carrot cake. It is a chocolate cake. We can all agree upon that, let's say. Ça, c'est un concept valide. Hein. Disons qu'on soit tous d'accord qu'il s'agit d'un gâteau au chocolat et pas d'un gâteau à la carotte. But the, 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 the chocolate cake, that, that, as the way they say it in Buddhist psychology, the way Lama Zopa puts it, mais le gâteau au chocolat, la façon dont on le présente dans la psychologie bouddhiste, c'est la façon dont l'Amazopa you know, le présente. Use, this is, this is way they talk in bon, c'est ainsi qu'on en parle dans le bouddhisme. The mind is like a mirror. L'esprit est comme, la conscience est comme un miroir. It reflects qui, whatever's out there. Qui réfléchit ce qui est là à l'extérieur. So the, the way Mushe puts it. Donc la façon dont Mushe. The chocolate cake on that plate. Le gâteau au chocolat sur cette assiette. That brown triangle on that plate. Donc ce triangle marron. Sur the way plate. it appears back to me. La façon dont il m'apparaît en retour. Is reflected back to me. Il m'est réfléchi en retour. Through the lens of my attachment. Sous le filtre de mon attachement. It will appear. It will appear to me in a, in a way that it doesn't exist. Et donc, il va m'apparaître et d'une manière, en fait, et dont il n'existe pas. And if I have aversion to chocolate cake, et si j'ai de l'aversion au gâteau, like, you know, I vomit if I eat it. Et par exemple, si ben, le résultat, c'est Same, que same à thing. Manger, même, même chose. The cake that appears back to me through the lens of, a, of aversion le gâteau qui m'apparaît en retour sous le filtre de mon aversion is not the cake on the plate. n'est pas le gâteau qui est là sur la scène. And any So these two delusions, Donc, ces deux delusions, these are hugely important ones. Et, et sont these two run our lives, basically. I mentioned yesterday, Comme je hier, Buddha, Buddha talks about we've got 84,000 distinct, 84, distinct mental problems Buddha, in our conceptual states of mind, in our, in our, or the, the neurotic concepts. Et le Bouddha est dit que nous avons et 84 000 problèmes mentaux différents. Donc ces états et ces concepts... C'est kind of vaste map. Et donc c'est comme s'il y avait cette vaste carte... Et as récemment, as, uh, uh, but he narrows them all down, they all subsume to three. Mais qui peuvent toutes être résumées en trois catégories différentes. The three poisons. Et, et qu'on va appeler les trois... The three toxic emotions. Les trois émotions toxiques. The root one. La racine, we'll go into this in more detail later. On en plus en plus tard. Known simply as ignorance. Donc, est est connu comme étant le But colloquially, we can call it ego grasping. Donc, de plus on peut de this is the most primordial. Donc, ça, la plus At the deepest level of the deepest assumption. Au le plus et de le plus A misconception. Et cette A wrong assumption. Cette of a concrete, solid, independent separate me. D'un moi et concret, solide et indépendant et séparé. That's the one that's completely eradicated when we so-called realize emptiness, which we'll et, go to later. Et donc c'est cet état d'esprit là qui va être complètement éradiqué quand on va réaliser la vacuité. On en parlera. So on the basis of this assumption. Donc sur la base de cet a priori. Then it's, it gives rise to its main voice. Et euh, bah, il va donner naissance à sa voix principale. Attachment. L'attachement. And, and so th then that 
it, it then gives rise when it doesn't so when it doesn't get what it wants it gives rise to the third one aversion right ignorance attachment aversion conceptual states of mind but so instinctive so perfected by us from countless past lives we come fully programmed with all of these and all the other variations of these 84,000 fully programmed at the time of conception I mean this idea of coming programmed is not too, un too unusual to us we think that in the, in the, in the, in the modern world as well in the, in, the, in the materialist philosophical view as well Et cette idée que nous soyons arrivés dès l'instant de la conception complètement, totalement programmés, elle ne nous est yeah. pas si étrangère, parce qu'elle on, on parta, est partagée également par la vue philosophique matérialiste. Meaning that we're informed by our past, there's nothing unusual to us. Et quand on dit qu'en en fait, eh bien, on est façonné par notre passé, donc, the difference is, la différence in the materialist world, dans le monde matérialiste, because we are the product of mommy and daddy, parce que il est dit alors que nous sommes le produit de papa et maman. And they're the product of mommy, daddy, grandma, grandpa, and back to the monkeys. That's that's the that's the past we look into, isn't it? Et donc et que eux sont les produits de grandpa, grandma et euh, je remonte pour remonter jusqu'au singe. Donc ça c'est le passé dont on va. Through our brains, our DNA, our genes, all these things. That the, we're impacted, we're, we're affected by them, which is dependent arising. Et donc, on, on va examiner notre cerveau, nos gènes, notre ADN, etc. Et, et on va et partir de l'idée que ben, c'est toutes ces choses-là qui nous... So Buddha doesn't disagree that we're impacted by our past, meaning mommy, daddy, their genes and DNA. He doesn't disagree with that. Not at all. C'est ça qui va nous produire. Et donc, le Bouddha, lui, il n'est pas en désaccord avec cette idée que les gènes, ADN, papa, maman... But his main point is... Mais l'idée principale the main, our main past c'est que notre passé principal is within our mind et réside à l'intérieur de notre which tracks it back esprit. tracks itself back to the previous moments of that mind et not mommy and daddy et qui peut être retracé jusqu'à l'instant précédent de cet esprit lui-même pas et retracé jusqu'à papa et maman so let's look at these three toxic emotions donc, et regardons ce que sont ces trois émotions toxiques. And some then more, a few more branches of these. Et puis euh, quelques unes de leurs branches. You know, you study. There's a text that you study when you go into more depth. It's called Low Rig Mind and its Function, which is where you study the both the epistemological model and at least some. There's a text that covers about 51 of these different mental states. We'll just mention even a half a dozen. But these, even these three, if we understand these, we have a profound insight into ourselves and therefore other people. Donc, quand on étudie ça et plus en profondeur, et donc il y a un texte qu'on va étudier qui s'appelle l'ORIC, l'esprit et ses fonctions, et donc là où on va étudier en détail et vont être choisis parmi tous les états mentaux, 51 et facteurs mentaux, 51 états d'esprit, donc ici là on va en parler que d'une demi-douzaine, mais même si on devait ne parler que de ces trois principales, mm. déjà on apprend beaucoup. So it's just leave ego grasping for the moment. And look at its main voice. Attachment. Mm -hmm. So the key, the key quality, the key characteristic of all this first category of states of mind is that they're, they're misconceptions. Donc la qualité clé, la caractéristique clé de tout et ces états d'esprit erronés, eh ben c'est que ce sont des conceptions erronées. Mm. To the degree that there is attachment in my mind, Et donc, dans la mesure où l'attachement est présent dans mon esprit, it misconceives the, the cake. Et il va avoir une conception erronée quant au gâteau. Shape and color is the object of its senses. Nothing, that's it for the senses. Parce que la forme et la couleur, donc ça, c'est l'objet des sens. Hein. Same with the handsome boyfriend. Même chose avec... Le I, consciousness, cognize the shape and color. Et la conscience visuelle ne connaît que forme et couleur. But look how it feels to us. Mais regardez comment on ressent la chose. The senses have so much. We give them unbelievable power. 
I mean, when Howard becomes my enemy, when he gives me up for a younger version, just even the sound of his name, I want, I want, I'm so upset. And so, the, the, you know, the shape and colour called Howard between today and yesterday, when yesterday I thought he still loved me, and today when I realise he doesn't, look at, there's no difference. He's got, he's no fatter, and he's got no more grey hairs. He's still the same. But yesterday he looked divine to me, and today he looks repulsive to me. We all know this. Et, et donc, on sait tous, regardez comment, et ben, je vais considérer Howard, et entre hier, où euh, je pensais qu'il m'aimait encore, et aujourd'hui, où je réalise qu'il ne m'aime mm. plus, eh bien, c'est la même forme et la couleur. Hein. Lui, il n'est pas plus gras, ou il n'a pas changé, il n'a pas plus de cheveux gris. Hein. Mais hier, il était si attirant pour moi, et aujourd'hui, il est si repoussant. So all these delusions, these negative states of mind, their function is to, in general, to misconceive its object. Donc toutes ces délusions, ces états d'esprit et, euh, erronés, eh bien, en général, leur fonction est euh, d'avoir une perception erronée de l'objet. What did you say? Misconceive. The, 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 oui. You said that. Misconceive. Okay. But in the way they misconceive, et la façon et dont ils le conçoivent de manière erronée, they embellish. So attachment Donc, embellishes deliciousness. La makes the object look so, the body, the shape and color called, that is labeled how, it looks so divine to me. We know this. But if you, when you, but you know from experience, if chocolate cake makes you vomit, mais et d'expérience, et vous savez que si le gâteau au chocolat vous, vous fait vomir, that shape and color, cette forme et cette couleur, or the smell that reminds you it's that, et simplement l'odeur qui va vous la rendre, causes the cake to look disgusting to you. Et ben, va avoir pour effet que ce gâteau va avoir l'air dégoûtant pour vous. It appears back to you through the lens of aversion. Et pourquoi Parce que le gâteau vous apparaît en retour sous le filtre de la version. Uh. All the delusions function this way. They misrepresent what's there. Or as Lama Zofa puts it, the delusions, these misconceptions, decorate on top of what is there layers upon layers upon layers of characteristics that just aren't there. But because we've been practicing these for eons, Buddha says. Everything we experience is, a, is, is a, you know, due to past karma, habit, all the, you know, impacted upon various conditions. Things appear, appear back to us in this distorted way. They're completely, we've, we've perfected these concepts. These stories. And then, Uh, and so then, as Lama Zopa says, and then, but then we believe the story. And these, all these delusions have their own function. And some are strong and more gross than others. But they all function the same way. They think cause what's out there to appear back to us falsely. And then we believe it. And all this happens in a millisecond. We're completely locked into this, this method, this system. Nous sommes complètement enfermés dans cette méthode, and, emprisonnés dans cette méthode. And this is why we, this is how and why we suffer. Et c'est la raison pour laquelle, et c'est le pourquoi nous souffrons. Mm. So let's look at attachment and aversion. These are the two main ones. Donc observons maintenant, intéressons-nous à l'attachement et l'aversion, qui mm. sont les deux des visions Actually, this, it was, um, I mentioned this last time, I don't know, but... 
Ling Rinpoche, the reincarnation of the senior tutor of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and one of Lama Zopa Rinpoche's lamas. Ling Rinpoche. Et donc, Ling Rinpoche, et qui est la réincarnation du tuteur senior de Sa Santé Dalai Lama et aussi d'un des maîtres de Lama Zopa Rinpoche. Has he been here, the reincarnation? When was he here last year? Just before Rinpoche in May. Yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah. Okay. And that's right, and that's right. And, and I saw him then, I think, and I saw him in, in London at that same time, I remember. So I remember he said then, he said recently, he said, I've never heard this before, he said this. Et donc, effectivement, je l'ai rencontré ici en mai dernier, ensuite j'ai rencontré à Londres, et, euh, et je l'ai entendu donc euh, récemment, et j'ai encore entendu euh, plus récemment. All these, this suivante. whole kind of presentation of 84,000 neurotic states of mind, mental problems, donc, afflictions. Dans toute cette présentation de 84 000 états d'esprit erronés, afflictions, délusions. 21,000 are rooted particularly in ignorance. Donc de ces 84 000, 21 000 et euh, de ces états d'esprit euh, sont ont, ont leur euh, rooted in particular in ignorance. This root to delusion, root delusion. Dans, dans l'ignorance, cette délusion racine. And then 21,000 are rooted in attachment. 21,000 rooted in aversion. And then 21,000 rooted in all three. It's kind of this elaborate map of the mind. Yeah. Just, just the negative ones. The neurotic ones, the misconceptions, the problems. Mm. So, okay, let's look at attachment and aversion. But attachment first, because there's a hierarchical relationship between these three. Ego grasping or ignorance is the root one. This primordial assumption. A, a misconception. A wrong assumption. About this... Uh, the, or an assumption of a, of, a, of a concrete, solid, set in stone, real, separate me. Cette affirmation de l'existence d'un moi concret et gravé dans la pierre, solide et uh, indépendant, uh, séparé. Uh. Moi. Moi. <laughs> oh, in the beginning, sorry. <laughs> okay. And its main energy is fear. Et son énergie principale est la peur. Mm. And its main voice on the basis of this wrong view of I, it's, it gives rise to this attachment. Et sur la base de cette vue erronée du je, du moi, et bien ça va donner naissance à cet attachment. Which effectively, in the way it's presented in the Four Noble Truths, it's effectively the main source of our suffering in day-to-day -day life, attachment. Et qui, effectivement, est de la façon dont euh, c'est présenté dans le cadre des Quatre Nobles Vérités, et mm. bien est la cause principale de notre souffrance au quotidien. So it's multifaceted. Donc, cet attachement est multifacette. There's many functions. Il y a beaucoup de fonctions différentes. We might use in our daily lives the word attachment. In this way, Buddha does. But when you hear these different consequences or different functions, you will recognize them. At the most kind of subtle level, the deepest, primordial level is, you know, since we're born, since we're conceived, is the it's the energy of dissatisfaction. Never enough. I'm not enough. I don't have enough. This deep aching pain of never enough. And this is the consequence of practicing attachment in the past. So naturally, if you don't feel you have enough or am enough or whatever, always dissatisfied, we're going to be the next level of attachment. Et alors va le is this de hunger, emotional hunger, cette faim 
to find something. And the first level of those that something is the object of the senses. It's the most obvious first level, isn't it? The shapes and colors and sounds and smells and etc. You know, the things out there. <coughs> this is functioning continuously. Et donc, ceci fonctionne en nous et de manière continue. And this, this attachment here at this assumption level is absolute belief. Et cet attachement là à ce niveau d'a priori de préjugé. There must be something out there somewhere. Il y a cette croyance et totale, complète qu'il doit y avoir quelque chose à l'extérieur. And that's very much dependent upon the karma we have. Et, et là, ça va dépendre beaucoup du karma que nous avons. It might be food. Donc, pour certains, ça boys, les bodies, les, les corps, handbags, les sons, les money, sounds. I mean, look at the world. As well as doing actions that harm others. Et et you know, killing, tuer, stealing, voler, lying. Mentir. Their habits. Tout ça sont des uh, become programmed with. Et avec nous yeah. So the attachment is always looking. Searching like a vampire. And then the next next level of this attachment then this emotional hunger level of it. This expectation that when I get it and have contact with it it will bring Satisfaction. Eh bien, ça va la satisfaction. It will make me happy. Ça va me so then we manipulate to get it. Donc ensuite, ce va faire, qu'on va you know, pour like I said in English, we have this saying, a control freak. Et, et donc, control, euh, always trying to control. That's a main function of attachment. Trying to control to get what I want. Et donc, et, uh, Convinced that when I get it, when the contact is complete, happiness will come. And then, especially when it comes, and then especially when it comes to possessions and or anything, objects of attachment, massive possessiveness. It's mine. Et euh, cette euh, sensation euh, très forte de, de possessivité, euh, de vouloir que ce soit. So attachment is dissatisfaction. Donc, sorry. attachment is dissatisfaction. Donc, l'attachement est insatisfaction. Is emotional hunger. C'est aussi cette faim émotionnelle. Expectation. C'est la manipulation. La manipulation. Possessiveness. Et le, ce sens de And all driven by its belief. Tout ça mu par cette croyance. That it's the cause of happiness. Que il là, that when I get it, bonheur, I'll get happy. Quand je je serai well, as we just began to discuss already, Buddha doesn't argue with that. Contact with the chocolate cake. Le contact avec le Clearly, the, the appropriate senses. Et donc, ça. Clearly, the, with the appropriate senses. Sense consciousness. You don't put the cake in this hole and wait for satisfaction. We know that. We know it goes into this one. <laughs> it does trigger pleasure. Pleasure is another moment for happiness. It does. Buddha doesn't argue with that. But he says because of attachment, we're grossly over-exaggerating. The power of that object to trigger pleasure and grossly exaggerate the pleasure itself. And then and can't bear the thought that if you keep having the object, that it won't keep bringing more happiness. It'll actually become. It'll it'll bring disgust. It'll turn into the suffering of suffering. So it causes a series of misconceptions. 
in our mind. So therefore, and in the end, disappointment because of that. Yeah. So, or, or in other words, when attached, when you completed the process of attachment of getting the object. En d'autres mots, et quand on a <coughs> terminé et ce processus d'arriver à obtenir l'objet... It does trigger some pleasure, no argument. Donc là, il est clair que effectivement, ça va déclencher... So we naturally assume that cake's the cause of happy feelings. Mais nous, nous partons de l'idée que... Attachment causes us to assume... L'attachement est, va avoir pour effet que nous allons partir de l'idée... So we keep putting the cake in the mouth, hoping for more happy feelings. ...qui déclenche les sensations agréables. Donc on va continuer à en enfourner dans la bouche et avec cet espoir de... And, bef- and before we realize it... Des sensations agréables. The happy feelings have gone. Mais et, euh, avant même que nous euh, nous en prenions conscience, et ben tout d'un coup, et les, les sensations agréables... And now you feel disgust. Et puis, vont s'être transformés en and how does that shape and color look now? Disgusting. How do you feel vous if you don't stop? Sorry? If we don't stop, how do we feel? Disgusting. Want to vomit? Disappointed. Disappointed. This, this is just, and it's completely instinctive because we practice this for eons. So that what arises then when attachment is finished doing its job inexorably the third one aversion. So anger, so okay, aversion too is multifaceted. And in general, it is the response when attachment is thwarted or attachment doesn't get what it wants or attachment gets what it doesn't want. Et c'est la réponse quand l'attachement rencontre un obstacle ou quand l'attachement ne tient pas ce qu'il veut ou quand l'attachement obtient ce qu'il ne veut pas. And this is how we live our lives. Et c'est ainsi que nous vivons nos vies. Like drunken sailors going between attachment and aversion. Yeah, so aversion too is multifaceted, like attachment. So the most obvious volatile level of aversion the obvious volatile level of when attachment doesn't get what it wants or gets what it doesn't want is anger. Shout, yell, kick, scream. But there are milder levels of aversion. Milder levels of thwarted attachment. Because attachment is always there. Always there. Driving every millisecond what we think and do and say. Et, et qui meut et chaque milliseconde de tout ce que mm. nous faisons, disons, le pensons. So when it's thwarted, et donc, quand cet attachement it's either the volatile level of aversion, anger, et là, il va alors survenir cette expression volatile de la version, or the milder levels of it, ou à un niveau plus léger, which we all have, que nous avons tous, which we never think about and never question, just think, oh, this is normal. Mais nous n'y pensons jamais, nous ne remettons jamais en question cela, et nous pensons simplement que c'est normal. Frustration, La frustration irritation, irritation, annoyance, et upset, l'énervement, l'énervement, anxious, worried. Soucieux, soucieux. They're all variations of thwarted attachment. Et tout ça, ce sont des variations et de l'attachement. Qui a... And then internally, et ensuite, et the internal manifestation of aversion, thwarted attachment, depression, despair. And these are happening all the time. Depending on our style, our personality, our habits. And this is what Buddha says is the source of our suffering. This is why we suffer. But because there's such deep assumptions, we don't question them. 
And the, to the degree that Buddha does question them, their validity, we, do not, we, we take them as givens in our psychology. Mm. So because we take them as givens, we assume that the chocolate cake is the cause of why I'm vomiting. And it's true, it is. But the aversion in the mind is what makes the cake look disgusting. The cake in its nature is not disgusting. It's only because it's your fifth piece. You know? So our mind makes up that story. Our mind is making up stories every millisecond. And these two, attachment and aversion, is a direct relationship. And attachment is the one running it. Yeah. So we're talking, this works at a subtle level. Continuously. So we've got to start at the grossest level. That's why we have to go to junior school first. And control the servants of our attachment and aversion. Our body and our speech. It sounds so boring. But that's a profound level of practice. If we can subdue our body and speech, you know, discipline our body and speech, already so much more control over our minds. Then we can do the real work of being our own therapist, unpacking and unraveling. Yeah. So this is a puzzle to us. You know, your point is we just mostly just go around in circles. That's how. That's the best we can do. Yeah, because we don't have proper. We don't have. We have not learned proper methods of how to think about and observe and then un unpack and unravel our conceptual stories. Mainly because. Because, mainly because we blame the chocolate cake for making us have happy feelings. And then after five pieces, we blame the chocolate cake for making us feel disgusted. We're obsessed with the objects of our mind, not the mind itself. We know we have anger, jealousy, depression, low self-esteem. But, you know, our, our, our model, we look for what it is out there, including in the past, to cause me to feel these things. So, we, so it's, it's this process of pointing the finger to the external thing. That's why I get angry. Because that's what happened when I was little and my mother did this and my father did that and the Catholic nuns did this. Now we know why I'm angry. Now we know why I'm angry. Now we know why I'm angry. I'm now off the hook. I'm off the hook. I'm not accountable. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. And the same when I'm happy. Although we don't think like this, but it's how it is. You know, we look back in the past and the lovely mummy and a kind daddy and the lovely nuns at school, that's why she's happy now, that's why she's kind and generous. So even for those, we don't take responsibility, we blame the outside. So again, Buddha's not arguing. 
with that idea that the external world plays roles, it's evident it does. But he says we're missing the main player. Our past habits, our past tendency habits, our past habits, which inform the way, the things we do and choose to do, and then the delusions and virtues in our mind now that inform the way they appear to us. Of course, this is the hardest job we'll ever do. Because we're, we're so programmed with blaming the cake, blaming the, the boyfriend, blaming the external event, you know, a loud noise. You know, oh, that's why I'm... Oh, loud noise. Everything's externalized. And the general idea of ego, the general energy of ego, the e irony of ego, is I'm an innocent victim. I'm kind of plonked on this earth by a creator, a god or a mummy or daddy. And things happen to me. You know, I didn't ask to get born, it's not my fault. Mm. So we have to start paying attention to our mind, Buddha says. Sorry. Start paying attention to our mind. So to be our own therapist is not that easy because we're so uh, pointing fingers and already we miss the point. I start showing he, this, she, that, it, this, it, that. I've missed the opportunity to see what's going on in here. Donc, pour être notre propre thérapeute, bah, ce n'est pas si facile parce que nous sommes si habitués à pointer du doigt et l'événement extérieur, la chose extérieure, la personne extérieure, il a fait ceci, elle a fait cela, etc. Et, et donc, déjà, et bah, en faisant cela, on manque l'opportunité de se tourner vers l'intérieur. So this is why the first level of practice junior school is so important. C'est pourquoi ce premier niveau de pratique à l'école primaire est si important. If I know myself enough, parce que si je me connais you know, suffisamment, I'll recognize that I've got this strong attachment to chocolate cake. Je vais reconnaître que j'ai ce fort attachement pour le gâteau au chocolat. So yes, you can do some inner work, but the first work, donc oui, je peux faire et un peu de travail intérieur. Protect yourself. C'est la première chose. Protect yourself. Je Make a decision to keep your hand in your lap after the third piece. If you have such an intense relationship with somebody, attachment, anger, jealousy, all the pain and dramas, if you, can't, you recognize you can't handle it. Leave him. Before you kill him. Or get killed. This is not a joke. 40% of all women on the planet, you know who, murder, who die, you know who murders them, don't you? The bloke in the same bed. This is not against men. This is talking about attachment. And anger. And blaming objects. Being a victim. No accountability. Before you know it, you're dead or you kill someone else. So the first level of practice, play safe, protect yourself, keep away from the food, keep away from the alcohol, keep away from the violent boyfriend, 
But the irony of this is, to even make those decisions, we have to have some self-awareness. And our tragedy is from the, you know, we don't have any self-awareness. When we're in, when we're in the victim mode. Which is what Buddha means by being a samsaric person. Blaming the objects. For your happiness and your suffering. Mm. As Lama Zopa says, and it sounds so shocking. The vast majority of all humans on this planet have absolutely no idea that what goes on in their mind plays any role at all in their lives. That's how we are. Until we start taking responsibility. Becoming accountable. Becoming our own therapist. Having some self-respect. Becoming conscious, you know. We understand all this, actually. It's not as if Buddha made all this up. He doesn't own this. He hasn't got copyright on this. But he's an expert at it, I'd say. So clearly we have to learn first, theoretically, to know what is attachment, what is aversion, what are these delusions. Donc, il est clair que nous devons déjà et apprendre à connaître ben, ce que sont et, et, euh, ces délusions, ce qu'est l'attachement, ce qu'est l'aversion, etc. How do they function? Comment ils fonctionnent? What is the story they're telling us? Quelle est l'histoire qu'ils nous racontent? Because mm. only then can you be your own therapist. Parce que c'est seulement quand nous aurons fait cela que nous pourrons commencer à être notre propre thérapeute. And that's why, you know, we need to control our body and speech. C'est pourquoi nous avons besoin de contrôler notre corps et notre parole. And then to do some kind of daily practice. Et, et puis ensuite, eh bien, de procéder à une sorte ou une autre you know, pratique quotidienne. Attempting to get some kind of focus. Et essayer d'obtenir un certain focus. Using concentration meditation. Et en utilisant des méditations de concentration. So that during our daily life. Afin que pendant notre vie quotidienne. You start to notice what the hell is going on in here. Et nous commencions à et, euh, être conscients de ce qui peut bien se dérouler ici. And to have enough discipline et avoir plus de discipline to hear the conceptual story pour entendre les histoires conceptuelles that attachment is, que l'attachement that anger is, is que that jealousy is, is low self-esteem, depression, depression. They're all very distinct conceptual stories. But for us, we experience them like a big soup of emotion. We can't even hear the different voices of these thoughts, you know. Tout ça étant des histoires conceptuelles très différentes, mais pour nous, et tout ce qu'il y a là, c'est une grande soupe d'émotions mélangées et on n'arrive pas à distinguer les différentes histoires conceptuelles. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get a break, I'm sorry. You need a break? Have a little break. No. Yes. No. Yes. Okay, I'll just sit here. Got a 10 minute stand up, regal, and come back. Sorry, I forgot. A regal. A regal. A regal. Okay.